What's up, Gunpla Modelers? This is Strider Prime bringing you a new edition of Gundam Models. And today I am going to talk about all my Gundam kits and model kits that I built for calendar year 2021. Another year has passed. Uh, we're all still here. Hopefully we're all okay. And uh, hopefully 2022 brings out the best for both of, for all of us, of course. But 2021 was interesting to the point where I thought I did a lot of builds, but I did very little builds. Uh, a lot of things were distracting. Wasn't making a lot of kits that I normally would. And I have not completed kits that I worked on. And I, got, I don't know. Something must have been going on with me and last year, I guess frustration and all that stuff. I, I can imagine everybody was all frustrated last year as well. But at least we enjoyed it when we went to our shows, when we showed off our stuff that we built. And hopefully we can get a chance to do it this year. But let's, uh, let me look back at all the kits that I made for 2021 and go down memory lane. And uh, you tell me guys, you, you guys tell me what was your favorite build of calendar year 2021? Let us begin. So the first kit I built in calendar year 2021 was the Master Grade Wing Gundam version Katoki, or I would call it the Wing Gundam 2.0. It actually came out in 2020, uh, I believe in December, but it was something that I knew that I, it was, I needed my undivided attention to do to build for, for 2021 and to bring it to um, any shows like, of course, MiskeoCon. And I really love the overall design of how this Master Grade came out. I think it's considered, I consider it the best version of the Wing Gundam that Bandai has released to date. Granted, the 1.0 is a great kit, but this one supersedes everything in, in the wing design and in, 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 in its overall uh, uniqueness everything was great on this and I decided to change up the painting job I decided to paint it the version that a famous uh, uh, person on on Instagram uh, I think it's pronounced Moy Moy from saying it right I'm sorry but I was inspired by the flame wings that you see under the wings of the of this kit and I did the two-tone colors of the red and orange I'm sorry, of the orange and yellow while well, I used my favorite Titan's Blue as the black over the kit um, I think it this is technically one of, one of my favorite kits that I built for calendar year 2021 and I really enjoyed working on it um, didn't win of course at MosquitoCon but it won a lot of hearts and a lot of uh, I got a lot of praises for this so it's a great kit and I want to see if sees of all other master grades that came out last year. Uh, if you see something like this, this kit on uh, you know on sale, or even the clear version or titanium version, don't pass it up. It's a beautiful looking kit, and I'm glad that I got my hands on it. And I, I wish I could have done more. I mean, I thought I did more to it, give it the best I, uh, job I can do and work, but. Granted, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's still a great looking build, and uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed it, but here it comes around the corner and, uh, one more time, sorry if the batteries are not strong enough, but this is a nice looking kit from the Wing series, and I'm glad that I got my hands on it. Hopefully they can do something like that on the perfect grade. The next build was the high grade RX-7802 Gundam The Origins. This is from the origin line of the manga that came out um, years ago, including of course the char version of Origin. Now, granted Grandpa has seen many uh, different variations of it, but this one came out also as a Master Grade, which I never got my hands on. I didn't feel like it, it just uh, never got around to it. But when the high grade came out, I was in, I was very impressed with it. And I said, I gotta get this guy. I like the beam gun, the beam rifle that came with it. 
of course you can see the hand is still attached to it but I like the overall uh, op the, the more options of weaponry that you have you have the original beam rifle the, the uh, hyper bazooka and the unique over the shoulder cannon which quite frankly not too impressed with it um, but still it is a great kit um, you know in its overall look also what I liked about this kit, of course, is I got a chance to try out Moto Paint from uh, from Robokai that I picked up last year, and the paint job came out really nice, and I really liked how it came the, how it came out. So, uh, thank you for Robokai for sending me those paints, and I'm glad that I got a chance to try it out on this unique build. Now, this was a kit that I really wanted to build for a very long time, the high grade Zuda from the MS Igloo animated series. I re um, when I got it, I, I was I always kept on seeing pictures of it all over the place and I've been since I was playing Battle Operations 2, I was using the Zuda a lot in the game, but I also was using the uh, the cannon that you see here uh, during during gameplay. And I really liked how it is. Now What's so great about this build, not only that I really liked how it came out, but I also decided to experiment on uh, cam camouflage, like a different type of camouflage. And I'm going to have to give credit to Zachary Aurelius, because he did a, um, a unique camouflage painting technique last year, which he did it on another kit that I, I'm sorry if I don't remember the name of it. But because he used a third-party company that used a special type of uh, masking tape to make the design, I looked at it and I said, well, you know what? You don't need to buy this type of tape. You just make it your own. And I did an experiment using the colors that you see here, and it came out great. I really liked how it came out. And this, of course, inspired me to work on my, on my next kit soon to make the same detail like you see right here but it is a great looking kit and I'm glad that it came with the long the, the long ass rifle because I was actually thinking that I was going to have to build the rifle because I liked it but it came with the kit and also I did some detailed parts here and there with thrusters from Kodo and all that stuff but it is a nice looking kit and I'm glad that I was able to work on it so my next kit was the uh, 160 scale RX sorry ARX7 Arbos from the Full Metal Panic animated series. Um, Mosquito Con was about a few months away, and I was looking at the rules and, and all that stuff, and they were talking about there were now a Gundam, uh, a Gundam category and a robot category. So I said, let me make a robot that's not part of that cat, that's not a Gundam, to bring it to the show. And I decided to work on the Arbalist. Um, I was actually going to do was the the other one with the rifle, but I couldn't find it, and, or actually couldn't find the instructions. But I said, "Oh, let me build the Arbalus because it's actually one of my favorite uh, mobile mobile suits from the series." Um, color changing, color wise, it was okay. Try to keep it the same. Didn't do any um, detailing or putting any um, any what do you call it uh, decals. Um, I don't know. I, I I liked it, but I didn't like it to a certain degree. It is a great looking kit, and all that stuff. And I'm glad that Bandai released it along with the other ones. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I was expecting more out of this kit. It's a nice looking kit, but I kind of expected more. So it's not a bad kit, but it's not a great kit to build. It I will not pass up on this if you're a fan of the Full Metal Panic animated series. So the next build was the IDW Megatron uh, from Flame Toys. Very unique looking version of Megatron. Um, my first Transformer model that I purchased actually from New York Comic Con back I believe in 20, um, 2019 I think it was. Or was it 2018? I don't remember. I got it at Bluefin. Um, and so oh, let me get this because uh, I never. Uh, it was like already like many people were were saying, oh wow, they're they're making transformer model kits, and I said let me get my hands on this, and I metallic painted it using some of the metallic paints that I've had for a while, which I haven't done any metallic builds in 
for a long time. It was also my second uh, entry for MosquitoCon in the robot section. And I said, oh, let me bring in it's a really nice color, uh, nice kit. I saw people bringing in uh, Transformer model builds as well at the show. So it, it was not bad. Uh, I have other other Transformer kits that I would like to build, but this one was very nice to try out uh, for the show. Now, my next build was something of a desire to build an aircraft. I was in the middle of building a lot of model kits that were not Gundam. Um, and I was kind of like psyched to see a two-pack from, from Ravel. This is the uh, F-14 Tomcat, uh, the, the Top Gun Maverick Tomcat uh, fighter from the um, Tomcat, I'm sorry, from the, from the Top Gun Maverick movie that was supposed to come out last year but it's going to be coming out this year. And I was, I decided to try out the paint that came with the kit, not realizing that it was technically not meant for airbrushing, to a certain degree. Um, but I did all, I did what I could with it, and mm, I decided to use paint that I had, and it didn't come out the way I wanted, but it did come out interesting. Very interesting. I didn't, this is not a complete build because even though I put down the, um, the, the Phoenix missiles on it, I didn't put the Sidewinder and Sea Sparrow missiles in on the side, and I did ruin the uh, canopy. Now, this canopy is technically from the 172nd scale um, cheap version of this, which I have not yet cleaned up. Um, there are these little parts here. These were the little notches that were from the other kit, which I need to somehow clean up and paint it and to make it even. Uh, and I've been so lazy, I haven't even got around to it. But I still have it, and I do want to finish it up to make it look good. Uh, whether I'm going to bring it to MosquitoCon show this year or not remains to be seen. But it is still a nice looking build and I kind of like how it looked. I definitely want to finish up the canopy and just get it done with it. My next build was a ship build that I wanted to try for a while and of all the ship model kits I had, I've had this for a very long time. This is the 170, 700 scale USS Mount Whitney LCC-20 from Trumpeter. Um, I, I really did a lot of work on this, and this was technically my second ship build that I wanted to try out. Ever since I did my, my um, the Sullivan Destroyer a year before, and I tried out the technique of the waves and all that stuff, I said to myself, I want to try it again on a different kit, on a larger kit. At first, I did buy a, a small aircraft carrier, but I said, let me try something else first because I want to get my feet wet and try it on other builds. And I had this modern ship for a long time, and I said, let me let me give it a shot and see how it worked. came out pretty good, though. D just didn't realize certain things that I, I'm not comfortable with. Um, the rigging was one of the big things that I made a little bit of a mistake, and it did break off the rigging and the flag came off and it's like, oh, damn it, messed that up. But overall, I was able to get the, get the proper way it's supposed to look, the way I wanted it. I did uh, buy these third-party uh, railings because I couldn't find the railings that were specific for this kit, and I did what I could to put it on, to glue it on, and, and came out really nice. Um, very came out really good and I, I really enjoyed building this didn't win of course from for the ship category however at least now I'm gaining some experience on how this whole thing will work and trying to figure it out I, I'm, I'm not gonna get winners off you know off the beaten you know off the bat I, I gotta like get my hands dirty and build other ships to see how far I can go because I, I was always a big fan of building ships when I was a kid, and this, I was able. I'm glad that I was able to elevate myself into this point of my of my skills, and I need to get better at it. 
Now, at the same time of me building the Watt Mount Whitney, I've also had this ship done as well. This is the one twelve hundred scale Yamato uh, by, um, I forgot the name of the company, but I think it's the same company from Ravel. They just, it's from a Russian company. And I did the same technique. I kind of like said to myself, I, I was not part of how the C, um, the C settings was set up properly on the previous kit that I just showed you. So it says, let me try something a little different with calmer waters, but a little bit, you know, easier. And it did come out pretty good. Again, didn't win, but again, um, practice makes perfect. And I'm glad that it came out the way it is for now. So my next build was the one 100 scale master grade GM Snapper 2 White Dingo custom. This was one of the um, P Bandai kits that I got from Bluefin a year before. And I decided to go all out with, with the camouflage. I did like the overall design and, and color and all that stuff. But I said to myself, I gotta try out the digital, the uh, camouflage that I just recently worked on with the high grade. Uh, um, the, the high grade Zuda and getting you know getting it prepared was n was not an easy task getting it you know the right detailing of the digital camera I kind of went a little too far in certain areas but again this was unknown territory for me and I wanted to try it out and see if it worked and I was deeply deeply pleased at how it came out this is technically my second best build of calendar year 2021 and I really really enjoyed first of all the, the kit is from the previous colony uh, GM colony type um, um, mobile suit which I was not happy with that build but I said to myself I'm gonna try to do my best with this one and this one came out even better it came with loads of weaponry which I still have for other kits surprisingly it didn't come with the sniper from the first kit but I do like how the sniper rifle looks on this one and I decided to apply it for this and I'll probably use the weaponry for the other kits as well but this is a great build absolutely gorgeous yes you can get the um, the normal version which is available uh, and getting this kit, you're only getting the only thing that's new is the is some some weaponry and and, and the shield is different. It's like from the uh, from the, um, the GM um, ground type. But other than that, it's so nice and you know color wise. And I'm glad that it came out the way I wanted it. Again, did not win. But I was appreciative of everybody uh, enjoying how I was making this, and I'm glad that it came out the way I want it. And it opened up my eyes on more digital camo or a different type of camouflage that I would like to try out in future model builds whenever I get the opportunity. If I find a kit that catches my attention, and I say, okay, I'll make it like that, how, you know, in that format. But Leech now, I, I understand the concept and the idea. And it was a great build, really good. I really enjoyed building. Even if I did not want win, I was really happy that it came out the way I wanted it, like that. So my next build was the uh, Yamato mini kits from the Earth Defense Force set that I've had collected. Been meaning to build some Yamato kits for a long time, and I've had this for quite some time. And I did some regular painting, customization. I even put a battery pack and a light source inside the Yamato itself to simulate the wave motion engine. I didn't do, that's right, the wave motion gun. Didn't do for the engine though. It is an old kit, but it is really nice and very small parts. It's a great um, series of kits if you get your hands on it. They're very, very rare to find um, these days, but if you can get your hands on them, please do so they're they're very nostalgic you really have to be um, you really really know what you got to do you know what you're doing when you're building these guys because they're very small 
and they take a lot of work. They're not like the newer McCloy kits that have come out, but you will definitely enjoy them, and they'll bring back the nostalgia in you. So my next build was kind of an experiment, and that was the two. I had two uh, Zaku One kits. One was the original Zaku One. And the other one was a Zaku One sniper from the from the uh, Crossfire video game, and I decided to work do a diorama setup like you see here. Like you know, one's inspired, the other one's firing the sniper rifle, and it came out pretty well with the diorama scene like that. Plus, I fed two wires up the legs power up the lights. It's not the best looking way it's doing it, but I hope to re, uh, refine it a bit more. So that way I can have it ready from MosquitoCon for a diorama scene. I, I, they're, you know, it's not completely painted properly and all that stuff, but I kind of like how it came out and I definitely uh, am proud of this work that I did. I did a diorama scene with, uh, with my Barbatos Astrograde, and it didn't come out the way I wanted, but this one actually did work pretty well using um, neutral, terrain, neutral texture rough terrain products by 8K. And of course, now the LED lights finally has powered off after close to three months. That pretty much show how well those batteries work. Um, yeah, this was, this was pretty good. And of course now the battery on the, uh, turntable has stopped because of the weight of this. There we go. But it, this was a really good build. I really like how it came out. So my next build was, of course, the high-grade Heavy Arms Gundam from the Gundam Wing animated series. Um, not bad build. I really liked how it came out. Um. It's not like the um, uh, Heavy Arms Custom that we are all familiar with, but still, they were able to really pull it off in the overall design and look of it from the anime, because it's basically following the anime line. I was actually considering of doing a, another custom idea, but flushing out the uh, bazookas, not the bazookas, the, the rocket launchers that was from Kotobakiya, it didn't work out the way I thought it would be. So I said, alright, never mind, just do a straight build. And it is a very nice kit. Um, very, It's not too expensive. I got it from Gundam Planet. So if you guys see this, get it. It's a really nice build. I know you can probably find it in other places. But for those of you who are a fan of Wing Gundam and a fan of Heavy Arms, you cannot go wrong with this kit. Next up is the Malice Kenbu 172nd scale from that new animated series that I can never seem to pronounce it properly. Um, this is a new uh, new series that Bandai has been releasing. There's a lot of these kits out there. And uh, this is the, uh, you know, the, the first model kit that came out. I did a lot of detailing on this using Kotobukiya uh, parts and photo edge parts here and there. Good work on the on the uh, panel lining and all that stuff and detailing. A little a little work here and there on the shoulders because there's an unusual seam line that's going right through it that makes it very difficult to clean up. So either you find a way to clean it up or you find a way to hide it. Only one way around that. But it is a nice, very nice looking kit, very big. It's 172nd, and now I just, and of course there's a 148 scale that's relatively master grade side, you could say. But uh, the overall design is really, really interesting. I really like how it looks. I was a bit surprised on how, how it was. Uh, uh, a, a very simplistic design. Um, not too crazy, but not too overly uh, detailed up. 
Um, but putting down the extra parts on that, like you see here, is pretty good. Certain parts that are a little bit too strong here and there, I didn't realize that in my painting wise, but it's still a nice looking kit. Again, another uh, another get for you guys if you need to get it. Uh, it's really nice. For my next build, it was the 144 scale high grade RX 78 F00 Gundam, the walking Gundam statue that's in Yokohama. I got this during the um, the uh, Bandai event or Gundam event festival, you could say that was happening back in August of 2021. The uh, P Bandai was selling a lot of uh, exclusive kits that were very very difficult to get um, unless you know you go through a third party and all that stuff or buy it online at in an, a ridiculous price you know price range but for this and other kits that I got and I got it for a reasonable price that they were offering had to wait a few months but no big deal when I got it I began building it now for this version there were two versions. There was the normal version of the RX-78 F00, and there was this one with the G-Dock itself. Um, the G-Dock is beautifully made and designed. The only diff the only gripe I have, of course, is painting-wise. It is a it is a lot of work to do to paint this, you know, because there's a lot of surface detail that you're not going to get. you got to really, really take your time on this. Um, I learned it firsthand that you don't want to over. You know, this is a, one of those kit parts that you really have to overspray a lot, but you also have good have to have good ventilation to take care of that. Regardless of the case, the kit itself is beautiful. It's top notch. I would recommend getting the if if an event like this happens at the end where you have a choice of getting the kit or the kit with the G dot. Personally, I get the kit. The kit's not bad. It's really good and very good detail. It took me a while to detail it up, you know, um, get it, get the right, you know, color wise on it. And actually, the colors were good because I was using the Moto paints from uh, from uh, Robot Kai that I got. But if you're planning to get the G Doc, you know, put a lot of work into that because it took me a while to get it right and it's not 100%. But it is a beautiful looking display stand. Just be prepared to make space if you want to display it uh, because it is pretty big and eh, you know takes up a lot of room so get it if you want but it's a, it, it's very nice it's still very nice and the last build for 2021 which carried over to 2022 was the master grade RX uh, 78 NT1 Gundam, also known as the Gundam Alex 2.0, and of course the 1100 RE100 Zaku uh, 2 Kai or FZ Zaku 2 FZ, but I like to call it the Zaku 2 Kai. These were really, really excellent. Builds. I really like how it came out. I also like the fact that I put an LED light on this guy, which pretty much, you know, still going strong. Um, great kits. I was surprised. I was deeply surprised on how it came out. Um, certain things on the Alex, just realized I made some mistakes that I need to work on. Whether I want to bring it to a show or not, I don't know. The uh, the Gundam F, the Gundam uh, sorry the Zaku Kai of course needs doesn't seem to have any issues I see here. Um, yet it wasn't I I did it like all green and not the dark like the body uh, main body was not completely dark green because I was trying to get pre shading done. So it was kind of like a. Uh, uh, an honest mistake, uh, an interesting mistake, you could say, but it still looks good regardless of the case. I'm, I'm kind of glad with it that it came out like that. I'm gonna probably do some weathering here and there, whether I want to bring it to the show, weather it or something. Uh, but it is really nice, and 
I'm, I'm glad that I was able to at least finish it up for the holidays. Uh, granted, being very late, of course. But, yeah, they're done. At least I don't have to worry about it now. Uh, and it's really good kit stuff. Um, Alex, you could probably find almost anywhere. I haven't seen the uh, the FZ anywhere lately. Uh, but maybe sooner or later, you know, there'll be restocks and stuff like that from so uh, just online stores or locations. So keep an eye on that if you want to grab your hands on it. But they're really, they're both good, great, good kits, excellent kits. And I see, and obviously with this guy, you can put an LED, LED light in the eyeball. So there you go. Uh, finishing up 2021 with these kits. And here are all the model kits that I have built. One, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and about two or three more of that which I did not, could not put on this table. So let me just redo it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So built around close to 20 or so kits for 20. 21. Alright. Not bad. A lot of work was put into this. Uh, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Could have been better. But what are you going to do? What do you guys think? It's alright. I have some. I have a couple of kits that are ready for this year. While others are just kits that I enjoyed making and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well let's see what 2022 has in store for me thank you guys all for watching my year room review of, of uh, all the kits that I've made in 2021 and what can I say but stay tuned for more than models yet to come you guys all have a great day